My sweet lord, this is a fun strumming song. And some cool stuff going on with the slide. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, this came out in 1970 on George Harrison's... Let me see if I have this here. George Harrison's first solo album, All Things Must Pass. This is, of course, the record version. Actually, really cool things came with records back then, too. Let me see if I can show you this. I don't know if this will, this will translate very well into video. But it came with a poster. Cool picture of George in his kind of Amish guard? No. But uh, anyway, All Things Must Pass was really, it was really his third album, by the way, because in 1968 he uh, had Wonderwall, and then there was another one called Electronic Sounds. But, uh, of course, My Sweet Lord was a huge hit for him, and, and uh, he, he really came out of the Beatles' uh, breakup, making some great albums, first couple especially, and then, then kept it up right into, uh, well, right up to about ten years ago when, uh, when we lost him. But um, the song, interestingly, a lot of weird things happen in the song. Now, of course, it's a great strumming song, and one of the things we'll be talking about in this is syncopated changes, where the chord change is happening on an and. We'll be strumming it with a pick. We'll be looking at playing some bottleneck stuff. So a little whole little segment on the slide. And we'll be talking about a version that we'll play with a capo, which is how George played it usually, by putting a capo at the second fret, playing and thinking in a, in a key rather than, than in a key different than the key it's really in. When we put the capo on, we'll be thinking about it and talking in the key of D. When we go capo less... We'll be uh, talking about it in the key of E, the key that it's really in. That'll be in the theory theory breakdown. Um, the song uses a lot of bar chords, one way or the other, and has a few unusual chords. We have some diminished chords and some seventh chords in unusual shapes, so we'll be talking about that as well. I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the chord progression to My Sweet Lord, because it's a, a common example of uh, a 2-5 progression. Now, in every major key, we have, of course, seven notes that make up the scale, and then seven chords that correspond one to each of the notes of the scale. And, of course, you hopefully you already know this if you checked out some of my theory lessons. So we have major chords on steps 1, 4, and 5, minor chords on 2, 3, and 6, and then a diminished chord on step 7. A lot of bar chords in this song. We're going to start with F sharp minor. I'm going to go over the ones that, I, that, uh, that are more normal kind of quickly, and then about the, some of the unusual ones a little bit more detailed. So in the key of E, we're going to need an E chord, E major, played in our standard E shape, open. F sharp minor, barred at the second, and using our third and fourth fingers in an E minor shape. And then the Bs. Now, B is a tough chord. There are a few different ways you can finger it. George plays it with his little finger flattened out across these three strings. I prefer to do that with my third finger, but it takes a lot of practice to get the right amount of bend in this A shape of a bar chord. So, um, again, this is derived from an A shape, just barred at the second, giving us the B. Well, the strumming to My Sweet Lord is really basic, so I'm just going to go over that real quickly, but then I have something more important I want to talk to you about. So you've got to make sure that we get that accented sound where you, the up has the chord change on it. Now, the, what I really want to talk about, though, with this is when I'm using the slide, it's really important that you learn how with the pick, when you're playing one string, like right here I'm going to hit a note on the second string and slide it from the 12th to the 14th fret. And now, if that note is still ringing, suppose I had to do this. What I wanted to hear was this. So I went from the 12 to 14 and then changed strings to go from 14 to 12. So I want to hear a slide up on the second string and then slide down on the, on the first string. But I don't want this to happen. What happened that time was both notes, you heard both notes slide down. So I want this note, the note on the second string, to get cut off when I hit the first string. So I'm going to do the slide here, and as I go in to hit the, the first string, I'm going to make sure that the side of my thumb touches the second string just before I hit the first string. So let's get into the what I'm calling Rhythm Guitar 1. Now this is a guitar you would play 
not capoed, playing the actual, thinking of the real chords that same are the same as a piano player or somebody else would. So we're going to be talking about this in the key of E. In the next segment, we'll talk about playing with a capo, and you're thinking in the key of D, but you're still playing in the key of E because the capo raised you, raised the guitar a whole step. So take a look at the intro. Take a look at the page. It has two sets of chords, the, the key of E on the left and the key of D on the right. And again, for the key of D, or the you have to be capoed at the second fret. And we've got our F sharp minor to B. The most distinctive thing about this strumming pattern is that every second measure, you change, change to the chord. Ooh, try it again. Every second measure, you change to the chord one eighth note early, meaning you get to it on the up before beat one. The song's a little easier to play, or less bar chords for a while, in the key of D, capoed at the second fret. So now take a look at the chart on the right, where it says capo two. And let's talk about those chords. These are a little bit easier chords because we don't have the double bar chords, meaning the, or like from F sharp minor where we've got a bar and then moving to the B, which is a, again a tougher bar chord. Now we still are gonna need that when the song modulates later on at the end of the third verse. The slide part, the two slide parts are what we're gonna take a look at here in this, in this segment. The, I have a, uh, an attachment, a tablature that has both lines on it. Now what happens here is the, the whole thing is only eight measures long, and for four and a half of those measures, um, they're they're playing in unison. So they're really playing the same thing. They just split at the spot where we have a descending diminished tumble, sort of. One guitar is we're dropping three frets at a time, but the two guitars are in different places, three frets apart actually. So. Um, but, a couple things about the slide. Um, I like to use a glass slide for the sound. It's a little mellower to my ear. Here's what the same thing would sound like with a brass metal slide. Um, just again, a little, little uh, not tinnier, but brassier sound. Gee, duh. So this is an actual wine bottleneck, probably from a Matus bottle. These are ones that make perfect for this, but a friend of mine made, these, made some of these for me a long time ago. So I'm very happy to have a real bottleneck. And you know what? It doesn't even matter really which way you put it on your finger. It, if, you, if you want it to go down further, uh, I don't know. I kind of like, I have a sort of a broken knuckle that makes it, well, deformed knuckle. that makes it fit. I like the way it fits on my finger just like that. A few things about the slide. Um, as much as possible, you want to keep your hand, the, the slide itself, exactly parallel to the frets. Now, when you get way up the neck, it's hard to do that, be, be it, but you still want to kind of try. And you also want to keep your other fingers laying flat on the strings behind it so that you don't hear this. Could you hear that as I was going down? that while one note is going down, you hear another one going up. That's the back side of the string creating too much noise. So if you're trying to get a really pure sound with the slide, I'm, as I slide down that string, you don't hear any other note going in the opposite direction. Here's a little, a, a short play along segment with the slide. I'll play those slide parts completely. I'll play first first one and then the second one. You can play along with me. I'm going to do this with the metronome at 70. So you just got to pay real close attention to the timing and know that we come in on beat 2 because the chord progression will be F sharp minor and when I'll do one more of those and now when I get to the, to the E we hit the chord on beat 1 and, and then we have to be up on that note on chord 2. So here is Guitar, slide guitar one, three, four, one.
Now I'll do guitar part two, which is the same two, three, four. Metronome play along time. This time, what I'm going to do is play through the left hand chord chart. Actually, you can play either one, doesn't matter. You could either play E and all the chords that we're playing there, or capo to the second and play D, or you could also grab your slide and play along at the second half of the intro and the second half of the first verse. But I'm just going to go straight through the top. Play the intro, verse 1, and then skip to verse 3. Basically, straight through the page. And when we get to the end of verse 3, we'll be, on, we'll be playing G sharp minor and C sharp, at which point I will run through the chords for you slide players out there. We'll run through the intro one more time, and you can come, come in with, with the slide. So when I say we're going to F sharp at that point, that's you'll be ready to hit the 18th fret and then we'll end it. So, okay, here we go. I have the metronome set at 80. See if we can do this. Two, three, four. Second line, 